from camping. Excuse the hair. I could not be bothered today. Um, we got back yesterday and today was just kind of our lazy day slash get laundry done. Um, it is currently late evening on the eighth day of the Tarot Readathon. Um, I finished Gathering Moss by Robin Wall Kimmerer for the Seven of Coins or Seven of Pentacles prompt um, to read a book focusing on nature. I am listening currently to Hawaii Story by Hawaii's Queen by Lilia Kolani and I'm gonna pull another card. Um, I still have seven hours left of um, this audiobook, however, I own it, so, um, and got, uh, three holds. Yes. Video. Video. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> um, got three of my holds from the library, none of which, of course, are on my July TBR or our already prompts, um, chosen for this <laughs> readathon. So, what I figure is that I'll draw another one and see if I can't get one of the ones that uh, I currently have on have from my library to fit. Um, just because because I got three and I'm trying to gonna try to get those completed first. Um, I still want to read Hawaii Story by Hawaii's Queen, um, but since I know I have like seven hours left. Um, I can probably get it done, most likely get it done by this next week. I just want to be able to at least get one of these uh, library books done as well. So here we go. Let's go with this one. That is the Ace of blades so uh, the ace of swords which is oops read the newest book on my tbr okay so the prompt is read the newest book on my TBR. TBR. I am trying to figure out if that means that technically I can interpret it however that's our um, positive for team of cups. Um, so mostly because so these are the three books that I have from my library. I have Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thompson. Oh, sorry, Thomas. Aiden Thomas. Everything you wanted to know about Indians were, were afraid to ask by Anton Truer. And The Marrow Thieves by Sherry Dimmel. Sherry, D Sherry Dimmeline. Um, or if that means like the newest books I've acquired which still could technically mean my audiobooks through my library or physical books that just came in today which would be All Systems Read by Martha Wells, Healer of the Water Monster by Brian Young, or Axiom's End by Lindsay Ellis. Um, I think mostly because when I pulled this card, I immediately thought newest books, so which makes me think of these. But if these ones just come came in from if, if these ones just came in from my library from hold, that would technically, I mean, all of them would technically be on my TBR. These ones are the newest to me. But I don't think they were as, um, came out this year. I, in fact, I think there are more older releases. Um, 
this one is also an older release. So I know that this one and this one came out in 2021. So I think it's up to these and I have both of these on audiobook through my library. So let's see which one's newer. Um, I did, I got this one by the publisher. So they sent me a finished copy. Um, and it's, this one's the Young Readers Edition. So thank you, Levine Corrido. I've, um, they've sent me stuff before. So thank you so much for sending me this. Sorry. For what? Interrupting. No, you're fine, babe. And I can't quite remember when I bought this, but they, uh, both of these, I, oh wait, no, this I received later, um, cause I pre-ordered it and I actually haven't hauled this yet. I've hauled this one. So, but if we look at the publishing date, this one was published in March of 2021 and this one was published in April. So I think we're going to go ahead with this, um, and I've been meaning to get to it anyway. I mean, I've been meaning to get to a lot of these, but I think because yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with. That's how I'm going to interpret this. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, for Ace of Spades, everything you wanted to know about Indians, but were afraid to ask by Anton Chur, the younger readers edition published by Living Corrido is what I'm going to read for this now. And, uh, Hawaii's story by Hawaii's queen. Um, like I said, I'm only like an hour or so in so far, and it's interesting, it's just a lot of names, and I'm worried because I don't remember a whole lot of them <laughs> at the moment, and there's a lot of dates, so I think this one would benefit from having a physical copy too, just because I, I can process it better that way, but um, so far it's interesting, it just seems like a whole lot of complexities between people right now as uh, Lilo Kalani explains it of who's related to who but like who's married off to who and yeah it's inter it's interesting but I'm finding that a lot of it is like information that I'm not retaining just because it's a lot of names and a lot of dates um, so I'm trying to get everything straight in my head and I'm sure that once I get further into the story it makes more sense so but yeah um immediately just the uh, pretext of this story is really interesting and like really kind of disheartening just because it was like a plea to the United States to just give Hawaii its own sovereignty so of the readathon of the tarot readathon 
it's July 20th. Um, sorry, you don't need to see my junk everywhere. Basically, we've been back <laughs> home for a couple days now. It is Tuesday, July 20th. Um, yeah, we came back from camping on last Friday, this last Friday, and it was really fun. Um, I didn't film very much because I'm still uncomfortable filming in front of other people. Um, and I did film a brief moment of me picking another card from the tarot deck so I could get another another audiobook. Um, I am not yet done with A Hawaii Story by Hawaii's Queen by Lily Alkalani. Um, still listening to that, still have just a little under five hours left. Um, I don't know if I'll necessarily get through it. Not that it's not interesting, there's just a lot of information being given to me in terms of names and dates and I can't always keep them straight. And now that I'm home, um, and there was a bit there where Brad was home as well and I don't tend to like to uh, listen to audiobooks when he's home just because I like to be present um, when he's home and uh, there is when he's home there's a lot of interaction between the two of us I mean we're <laughs> in a relationship so um, yeah we ended up going halibut fishing on Sunday I think I mentioned that uh, I didn't catch anything other than uh, skull pin, <laughs> but Brad caught a halibut. Um, yesterday was Monday, my first day back from vacation for work, um, which again didn't really listen to anything I very well could have. And but I'm wondering if I'm sliding back into a slump again, which hence why I picked another tarot card. So. I have yet to read everything you wanted to know about Indians, but we're afraid to ask. Um, I do want to get started on that just to see. Um, I would like to finish Hawaii Story by Hawaii's Queen by Lily Alkalani. However, it's just kind of dragging um, for me. So picking up another nonfiction um, feels like it would be, I don't know. I. I don't know how I feel from going from one nonfiction to another. Um, ultimately, <laughs> I wish I would have just chose Lost in the Neverwoods because after reading rereading the synopsis, this sounds really fun. <laughs> um, so I may just end up doing that. However, it wouldn't necessarily be for a tarot card. Maybe <laughs> let's try it. Let's pick one more tarot card and see if I can't get a see if I can't get a prompt that I can kind of let that will let me listen to um Lost in the Never Was by Aiden Thomas I'm hoping <laughs> we'll see though uh let's see so this would be my tenth pull. So I have the prompts up. I have my cards here. And ultimately I apologize for like <laughs> the lack of vlogging since coming back. I don't think my life is that interesting to actually vlog. Um, however, I mean we still have four days left of the readathon so we'll see what I can do. <laughs> Okay, so we've shuffled. Let's take a look. A lot of coins and swords, blades. A lot of coins and blades. What's this one? I apologize. I sneeze. <laughs> and then allergies. Okay, so this is nine of coins. I really like that with the little skulls and the coins. And that, like, I wish you would let me know. One, what the skulls were, and two, what the botanical illustration was. Okay, but what is nine? So this would be nine of pentacles, which is read a book with just one main character or a very small cast of characters. I'm going to go ahead and see if that counts for this, because uh, it sounds like we're following Wendy's story. I think this, I believe this is like a darker retelling of Peter Pan. 
I believe, I'm not sure, um, about basically Wendy and her brothers. Um, it's been five years, here, let me just read. When children go missing, people want answers. It's been five years since Wendy and her two brothers vanished into the woods near a small coastal town of Astoria, Oregon. Wendy returned with no memory of where she had been or what had happened to her. Her brothers did not. When the town's children start to disappear, the mystery around her brothers is brought back into the light and the police are once again knocking on Wendy's door for answers. Attempting to flee her past, Wendy almost runs over an unconscious boy lying in the middle of the road. Peter, a boy she thought lived only in her stories, asks for Wendy's help to rescue the missing kids. But in order to find them, Wendy, Wendy must confront what's waiting for her in the woods. So yeah, it sounds like it's from Wendy's perspective. And it sounds like a relatively smaller cast of characters. I don't understand. That's one thing. Is that like, it's thankfully it's up to my own interpretation. So because it's Wendy's perspective, I assume it's only Wendy's perspective. And it's like, just a handful of characters I consider that small compared really to like a book like Six of Crows or um, the Wayfarer series or like The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet which has like six or seven perspectives. This is fine. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to choose for this which yay because now I get to read it <laughs> um, and I've been wanting to. So yeah i am also like not very far into kink um i'm in a story actually that i will probably just skim over because it like the okay that anthology i think it's an anthology yeah that anthology is fairly interesting um i don't know what i expected from it i think i wanted more of a, like a dynamic of of kink of kink life and in a way we're getting that from like it sounds like pers I don't know if it's personal perspectives I don't know if the I believe these are uh fiction fictional stories of different variations of kink which is fine <laughs> but it's in a way um something that I knew about um as I have friends in into kink um, so it's some things that I've already learned about from them and other things that I'm just like knew about and wasn't as, wasn't nearly as thrilled about just because, okay, I'm not necessarily into kink. There are some aspects that I do enjoy or do, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I'm going to just have to finish it and sit on it. To figure out my thoughts on that but ultimately I'm still like five stories away from finishing that anthology and I'm stuck on a particular story because it's just kind of losing my interest uh, so I may end up skimming it um, and then of course I'm still also physically reading Sorrowland I want to finish that one before picking up another physical book uh though i am starting to really look at my heart is a chainsaw by um stephen graham jones as its um publishing date is in august it's not till the end of august so i'm not too worried if i don't finish it this month but it was one that i was hoping to get to so I'm starting to feel the stress of like and <laughs> and even if when the readathon ends i'm not gonna just like any if anything I was reading for the readathon and the readathon ends and I can't no longer submit um points or whatever doesn't mean I'm just gonna put the book aside and continue what I was reading before the readathon started I'll just go ahead and finish them off <laughs> um but yeah I don't know I'm for some I'm putting unneeded pressure on myself and it's not helping because <laughs> I picked some zucchinis from my garden and how extra and um, my mom told me that if I had any extra before they go bad to give them to my neighbor um, or our neighbor who lives a couple houses down. Uh, she has two boys and her husband and I guess she thought she grew zucchini and that's not what she grew so she said she would trade me so that's what we're gonna do. I don't know what she has though. <laughs> so I think it's just, I don't know, I'm just gonna go drop them off. So, oh and what I found out, um, so I, there was a mystery squash 
that was in my garden. It someone like dumped. Um, I don't want someone in my family uh, took some squash last year and put it in my garden, so it kind of just rotted in the garden. And when I went to weed and plant this year, um, the plant the I tried to get as much as the seeds out as possible because I didn't know what they were and some of them ended up germinating anyway so um, I kept a few of them and just let it grow just to figure out what it was and I think I'm pretty sure it's spaghetti squash which is great for the most part I don't mind spaghetti squash it's a really good uh, noodle alter alternative however I feel like that's all I can really use it as. I want to look it up more and see what else I can use it for. Um, I was kind of hoping for either butter not acorn or pumpkin because I feel like I can do more with them, um, particularly soups, <laughs> but also baking. Um, but I'll have to see. I'm pretty sure it'll be fine though. So um, it's so far it's yielding one pretty big one, and um, but a bunch of it's, it's coming through. Hello. Uh, so I'm at work at the library currently um but I don't think I'm the only one here I know that I do have a co-worker in another room but I'm gonna do some ILL work um but ultimately I just wanted to check in and go I have started and I'm like 78% of the way through Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas I have to say um not as gripping as I was hoping it would be um, at the same time, though, I'm realizing I am not the biggest fan of Peter Pan retellings. Um, I'm not a big fan of Peter Pan. <laughs> not only because of the indigenous stereotypes, but um, also because Wendy Darling um, is not a character that I connect with. I find her really annoying. And Peter Pan, I have problems with. Um... Like, I understand the concept of his character of, like, staying young and being childish. Um, and I enjoy, what I do enjoy about this book so far is that he really um, is serious about the role of finding lost kids and taking them to Neverland and kind of having that, um, that sorrow and that scaredness, like, put upon his shoulders um, so that he can help the kids who are lost that I find really fantastic but the rest of it I find like really just kind of irritating so far um <laughs> Wendy I get that she had gone through a traumatic experience but there is so much self-doubt um and just like there's a couple things that like I'm just not liking about it not to say that I don't like it enough to DNF it um, it's also, I think, really cool that it's based in Oregon. I know that I've read other books that were based in Oregon that I had problems with because it was like a made-up place, and that tends to bug me. I don't know why. It's not like I'm an Oregon native at all, but I'm familiar enough with Oregon. Um, so this book is based in Astoria, which is a small town on the very northern tip of, um, northern border of Oregon and Washington. It's just along the or uh, Columbia River. So it's really cool to uh, get some of that aspect of uh, the atmosphere of how big the Columbia River is and the fact that there are shipping containers um, and ships bringing shipping containers along the Columbia River because it is a really big export. Um, but yeah, so that part is really interesting. Wendy herself kind of bugs me, like the character of Wendy, not only in the original Peter Pan, but in this book. It just isn't con I'm not connecting with which tends to be a problem um so that's where I'm at so far like I said I'm 78% of the way through I have like a less than three hours left I am here for a little over an hour so I'm wondering if I can bust it out while I'm here hello you get to watch me brush my hair um yeah it is the last day of the tarot readathon I did finish Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas, um, and absolutely love this cover, uh, and this was for the prompt Nine of Coin, which for the Tarot Readathon would be Nine of Pentacles, um, so, and that was to read a book that had, um, one perspective or, like, a 
small cast of characters. We're only following Wendy Darling perspective in this and it's a relatively small cast of characters. And how do I feel about it? I think I'm going to give this a 3.5 rating overall. Like I said yesterday, I'm not the biggest fan of Peter Pan, let alone Peter Pan retellings. Um, just because Wendy Darling as a character tends to irritate me. I didn't like her character in the original. I don't tend to enjoy her character um, in retellings, though to be fair, this is only my second Peter Pan retelling. But her character as a whole is fairly, I feel, naive and <laughs> gets things a little slow and that tends to irritate me. It took a little longer than I wanted for Wendy in this one to realize Peter Pan was real. Um, and ultimately with this retelling, um, this was pretty cool in that Astoria is a real place. I don't know if it's an accurate representation. As I said, I've never been there. I'm also not a local, so who knows? Um, but it was still a cool aspect of it and there was leading towards the horror end of Peter Pan. I felt like it could have been pushed a bit more. Um, I don't, is this YA or is it children's? I feel like it's YA because Wendy's 18. Um, but I still feel like it could have been pushed further. Um, but I feel like that kind of happens in general with me for more um, horror leaning towards a younger audience. Coraline I thought needed to be a bit pushed further but <laughs> I mean as a child as a children's book it's probably perfect <laughs> but to me I wanted more. Um, it's the same with this one so let me check. Yeah it's a young adult it doesn't even say it's horror but it's leaning towards that horror genre it's kind of, kind of creepy which I enjoyed like I said I kind of wish it was more so. Otherwise every some other things um that kind of bothered me was that um she became kind of really shitty to her family and her friends real quick and it was to like be able to get the freedom she needed not that she was get the freedom she needed to be able to, um, to be able to, um, look more into the disappearances of these kids and find her brothers. Um, but like her best friend that stuck with her through the trauma of, um, before and after being kidnapped and, um, like, believed her no matter what like it was to the point where Wendy believed that her parents weren't really believing in her anymore um that she just so easily kind of tossed her aside so I picked this book because it was a small relatively small cast um but I feel like there needed to be more connection but I don't feel like it was like as emotional as like the book tried to seem make it out to be um but yeah so I did like the aspect of Peter Pan. Usually, of course, Peter Pan usually tends to bug me as well as a character just because he is childish, which I get is the point, but still, and he's like overly cocky. Um, and in this instance, he's to the point of childish and cocky where he really nearly goes into stuff that doesn't have much to do with the plot. Um, it's just to go do stuff, <laughs> which like, okay, I get that we don't have to be like along the plot the whole time, but it was just kind of like, are you, are you kidding me? Um, especially if there's like a time like restriction somehow. So, um, but I did really enjoy his aspect of, uh, his role as Peter Pan, um, because it's like, guiding lost boys so he's more of a shepherd of sorts where he he's like helping them um like if boys like if the kids are literally lost he'll help them and soothe them and um take care of them until they find their way and there's an interesting aspect for some reason during certain aspects of this book it really reminded me of um not guardians of the galaxy 
Oh, it's that one. What is it? It's like where all the, um, um, like Jack Frost and, uh, Father Christmas and the Tooth Fairy and, um, the Easter Bunny ends up like, it's like, Rise of the Guardians, that's what it's called. And of course, not my dog's barking. Um, yeah, it had this, like, element of Rise of the Guardians, and just because of how, so, with the villain aspect of it, he definitely just reminded me of Pitch, um, which, uh, is essentially the boogeyman of, uh, in the Rise of the Guardians, because, just... <sighs> just because his explanation. Um, I don't know, there was that aspect of it that I really almost expected, like, to defeat him was to be, like, was fun. Which, no, it wasn't, but it was just like that, for some reason, came to mind. And for this book, I did um, put the book into the, um, into the score thing. What am I doing today? Today is the last day of the Tara Readathon, and I was hoping to read and finally finish Kink um, by R.O. Kwan, just because I do have a couple more stories out of it. I haven't been reading two stories a night as I had intended. Um, just, I kind of, kind of fell off doing that after going camping. Um, so, but I feel like there's like four maybe stories left that I can probably bust out today at some point. Um, but I need to go take some packages over to an office supply shop before they close at 2. I was also going to take a look at a nursery because it's actually my mom's birthday today. Uh, but she's out of town, um, because there are boat races going on in Oregon. And so she's up there. But I was going to go to the nursery because she has a little side yard along our house. And she's been really wanting lilacs. She loves the smell of them. She loves the look of them. Um, so I was going to go to the nursery and see see how much they were, depending on the, like I know it's the size depends. But I was going to go see that. So I'll take you with me there. Um, and then I was also going to check out the farmer's market that's happening um, in the plaza today. And the reason I kind of want to look there is because I got a couple strawberries from my own garden. It's only like five right now. Um, yeah, I picked four yesterday and one the day before. Um, so it's like a small handful and you can't really do much with that. And I have this really strong inkling to either make some fruit leather or um, make strawberry jam. So I think... I'm gonna try to get some um, local strawberries to kind of supplement that so I can try to do it. I know that Brad and I have both been wanting to go to a blueberry farm so I could do the same thing. Um, so I don't particularly like the fruit leather that I make, but <laughs> Brad does, which is something. My family doesn't like it either, um, but Brad really likes it which is fantastic because uh, I actually enjoy making it. There's a lot of things I enjoy making that I don't necessarily enjoy the product of, but <laughs> Brad does. So that's fantastic. So what basically I'm going to do is, uh, um, I make, I like to make fruit leather and then freeze it. And then when he goes hunting, he takes the fruit leather with him because it's an easy thing to put in his pocket and snack on throughout the day. Um, as they're hiking around looking for deer. So that's fantastic. Um, so I know we've been wanting to go to a blueberry farm. Um, my coworker just went and she absolutely enjoyed it. And I'm finding that she enjoys a lot of the same things I do in terms of botany and foraging and um, gardening and baking and binding. So that's really exciting. Oh, I also need to get pumpkins from the nursery. Um, I know I'm getting kind of late here in terms of planting pumpkins, um, but I had a mystery squash in my garden and it finally started fruiting and I finally figured out that it's spaghetti squash, which is fantastic. But I really was hoping for pumpkin. <laughs> uh, so now that I know it's not pumpkin, I need to go get... Actually, I should have pumpkin seeds. But should I get already budding? We'll have to see about that. Ultimately, I need to clean one of the garden beds so that 
I can do that. Um, I also need, I don't know, just, I, this is a bunch of things I need to do and it's making it, me sound like I can't actually get um, kink done today. Back in the car, uh, I delivered my packages. I went to the farmer's market, as you can tell. Um, I got a frozen rabbit. I'm so excited. Um, I've been looking for this for a while. I've been wanting to try rabbit. Um, I wanted to try it when I was in France, uh, my senior year of high school, and we just weren't able to find it. Um, so I've heard good things from like my French teacher from high school that essentially it's like a French chicken <laughs> um, but yeah I've been looking for a little bit and I knew that there was a couple farms around here that raised um, meat rabbits but I had never seen it at the farmers market before so it's really cool that I was able to find some um, I think I'm leaning towards that for dinner tonight <laughs> we'll see what I want to do with it she gave me a couple of recipes um for the rabbit and essentially it's like she said essentially cook it like you would chicken but just low and slow um so i'm excited about that i also got some lemon cucumbers because mine are just now blooming so i'm hoping that i didn't plant them too late in the season um so i got that for my mom and my partner because they both really love lemon cucumbers i also got some tomatoes from our, our um both the lemon cucumbers and the tomatoes are from Willow Creek which uh, we there's several farms there um, but I believe this farm is the farm that we're always trying to support um, there is like of course other farms in Willow Creek which isn't bad it's just like <laughs> I feel like a lot of them have uh, other uses uh, for prescription medication <laughs> or um, yeah anyway not that that's bad, it's just it worries me because um, pot farms are actually pretty bad for uh, if you're not doing it right for our rivers. So there's that. Um, but yeah, so I believe this farm um, is the one that we try to support locally and my mom's been really wanting their tomatoes. So yeah, that's that's what. And then now Brad and I are trying to figure out what to do for dinner tonight. Um, I think he wants to do fish so we'll probably do fish and then do rabbit tomorrow or something because the rabbit is still frozen so um I was gonna try to stop at the bookstore and get something to eat at our local bagel shop um if you ever are in Humboldt County try Los Bagels super good um yeah but that's what I've been wanting to do and then I want to go to the university because I actually have an idea for a photo for Gathering Moss by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Um, and, and of course it deals with mosses and the only place that I've so far been able to find moss, not that I was looking very hard, was the university. There's a couple trees that are really pretty that um, have moss on them. So I got here a little late. I couldn't find any of, my, any of the strawberries I was looking for. I may just stop at the co-op and get some strawberries there if they have some good decent ones. Um, or if I should just wait. Okay, we are officially done with the readathon. It is July 25th, and I figured I should sum up everything that has happened. So, first off, this is the Tarot Readathon, and it's hosted um, by several different people. Teams are involved, each team has their own host. I was on team cups or in this like this is elixirs but it's team cups for this readathon which was Deja's team and I had these books on my TBR plus one audiobook um that I don't have physically 
it, yes, it was very ambitious. Um, but part of that was because our, um, positive for our team or like, uh, yeah, it's base our positive. So it's like the card facing up, um, or like facing the right way was that we could interpret the prompt however we wanted, whether it was like within the, the within reason. So if there was certain certain something on the card, then we could choose a book based on that or basically kind of interpret the prompt how we wanted. Uh, in reverse, our reverse was that once our TBR is set, we cannot switch prompts with books. So like my with my heart is a chainsaw at the prompt um was what's that ten of blades was ten of blades so ten of swords and that prompt was a murder mystery so if i wasn't getting into this book at all i couldn't switch this prompt with another or to another book that featured another murder because this is what I put the prompt as we can't switch so if we want it if we just weren't feeling a book or anything that meant we had to pull and we wanted to read a particular book that had was yet on our TBR we had to pull another card and hope that it fit for it which I did a couple times <laughs> so yeah in terms of the books that I read, I didn't get to My Heart is a Chainsaw. I am rolling this over for my August TBR. I did not also did not get to take a hint Denny Brown. Um, like I said, My Heart is a Chainsaw was Ten of Swords, which was a murder. Um, take a hint Denny Brown was Nine of Swords, a lot of swords, a lot of coins. Um, was Nine of Blades, which was to read a book with a mental health rep in it. I did end up getting a comment in my TBR video for the Tarot Readathon saying that Take a Hint Denny Brown does have mental health rep in it, so there we go. Um, but yeah, didn't get to it. I'm still hoping to get to it at some point. Um, I would like to finish the series before the end of the year, um, but it would, just didn't work out for this readathon. Everything you wanted to know about Indians, but were afraid to ask by Anton Truer. I did not get to. This was to. This was like a one of the polls for, and this was the Ace of Swords, which was the newest book on my TBR. Technically, um, yeah, I just had this on a library audio as a library audiobook, and wasn't what I was feeling. Um, didn't end up getting to it. Would like to get to it at some point. Um, I did try to listen to the audiobook. It's like I said, well, just wasn't something I was feeling. Plus, after looking through this book, it has um, some multimedia stuff in it, as in like there's some articles as well as pictures. So I think this is a book that's going to be best like read physically. So also hoping to get. I mean, any books that I don't get to within the month, I always hope to get to eventually. It's just a question of when. So, uh, I also had, um, Hawaii Story by Hawaii's Queen, Lily Alkalani, and that was for the Queen of Blades or Swords, which was to read a book with a queendom or matriarchy. So, Hawaii's Story by Hawaii's Queen is by Lily Alkalani. Lily Alkalani was, um, Hawaii's last queen, um, and like and I'm I think I'm like 40% of the way through it um I ended up having to put it down just because it like just kind of stopped listening to it mostly because I had audiobooks that I had wanted to listen to um this particular audiobook I have bought in off of Libro FM and had been enjoying it it was just that there was a lot of info dump on coming on to me like um dates and people and I was kind of getting confused and it wasn't as gripping as I was hoping it would be. I'm still hoping to finish it at some point. So Kink by R.O. Kwan and Garth Greenwell. <laughs> I had meant to read two of 
I like marked out all of this is like an anthology regarding like um, BDSM and sexual kinks and yeah um, so yeah it has like stories from Roxane Gay and Carmen Maria Machado my I, original plan was to read two stories a day and hopes that I would get this done in time but by the time I went camping um, I just didn't I just it just, just kind of fell off I am so close to being done um, I think one of my main problems with this book so far is that one the size difference with some of the stories like I'm currently in the middle of Carmen Maria Machado's book or story within this book and not that I'm not enjoying it but it's like her particular story is like I think it was 50 pages long while everybody else's was like 20 to 10 to 30 and I think that's what's bugging me is like the inconsistency of size not that it really matters I don't know necessarily I don't read a whole lot of anthologies so I'm still figuring out what I do and don't like about them and I think the other thing about this is that I it wasn't quite what I expected um but yeah I'll get more into my review of it once I finish um like I said I'm almost done and this was for the prompt one of coins or for the readathons like it was one of pentacles and that was to read a book with a one word title so kink so yeah I wasn't able to finish that still hope to get it done um within July hopefully <laughs> so I meant to get it done yesterday but yesterday didn't pan out as I expected if um there was a bunch of things that I had planned on doing and <laughs> if you watched this vlog at all we'll see just how much I put into it but um basically my whole plan was to finish kink yesterday because I thought I like would have time and it would be the perfect day but I just kept stacking things on top of things that I needed to do and ultimately <laughs> just didn't feel like reading it at all and at a certain point I was it felt like homework and I just completely ignored it um and decided to continue playing Sims since the cottage, uh, the cottage expansion came out on the 22nd. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Now for the stories that I, or for the books that I did manage to finish and submit, um, to the Tarot Readathon first being Last Night at the Telegraph, Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. This was for the prompt, the three of the swords, like I said, a lot of swords, which was read a book that you think will be a tearjerker. For the most part, I enjoyed the book. Um, it was a little predict, not predictable, but a little meh for about half the book. And then uh, the second half of the book, it really started getting my interest. Once Lily, like for sure, like figured out that she was a lesbian and, um, everything started getting going and she was really kind of living her life and ended up having to, um, find herself in the result of it, um, of people finding out. So yeah, that I, yeah, I did end up crying for this, um, in, in this book. Uh, mostly not just because of Lily's coming out, like forced coming out. So that's one thing too. So content warning for forced outing, um, racism, stereotypes, but it wasn't just her forced coming out. Um, but it was her relationship with her brothers, which I wish the rest of the book had explored more because when, um, her brothers had come to her aid, um, it was really sweet and like that's what ultimately made me tear up and I believe it's because I like I definitely enjoy sibling bonds within books um having siblings myself and having lost one so that yeah that definitely but also her forced outing so that was really and her options were really depressing as well um so yeah, I enjoyed this book. I forgot what I gave it. Uh, I gave it a four star. I think the ending really, I really did enjoy it. Next, I read Gathering Moss by Robin Wall Kimmer, A Natural and Cultural History of Mosses. I listened to this via Libro FM and on my way to and from um, a camp trip. And this was for the prompt, 
seven of coins, so it would be the seven of pentacles, which was a book featuring sustainability or has a big focus on nature. Um, the two books that I've read from Robin Walkimer definitely do have a, um, nature theme as she is a botanist um as well as very she's very curious about and has is knowledgeable of um Potawatomis and other um tribes cultural uh connections with plants which I definitely always really appreciate about her works um this one particularly is like if you've read Braiding Sweetgrass if you took a chapter out of that and expanded it and had her go more into it that's what this um book is about really particularly about mosses and yeah I really I really enjoyed it however there were some like there were definitely scientific jargon that I thought was a little much um, she definitely named off all the mosses with their Latin names, which I wouldn't recognize and definitely describe them in terms of their scientific anatomy, as opposed to, like, common names and, um, uh, just kind of, I don't know, it, it was hard to follow at times, just because it's like, okay, I don't know what, what, which moss you're talking about. Um, plus there's over 2,000 different types of mosses, so it's like, okay, which one for, like, someone who doesn't know all the Latin names off, offhand, like, what are these? Um, that was my only problem. Otherwise, I absolutely loved how she went into the cultural relations, um, with mosses. Um, those of Potawatomi are similar to that of here in along the coast of California, um, north coast of California, particularly Yurok and Hoopa. Um, I have a, uh, full review out for this book that basically I'm saying the same thing, but if you want to check it out, I'll link it down below and up top. But yeah, I really did enjoy this and it was just a short little book. I think it's 166 pages and that's including the index. And the final book that I was able to get done before the Tarot Readathon was Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas. This is Aiden Thomas's second book. However, I have, and I've been meaning to read Cemetery Boys. I need to get to that. But this one is a Peter Pan retelling, which I didn't know about going in. It should have clicked and it, did, and it didn't. Um, because unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of Peter Pan. Content warning in this book for grief and loss, as well as gun violence, child death and murder. Um, so this was on like the, it felt like a more horror side of Peter Pan, which I kind of enjoyed. I felt like it could have been pushed further. I don't think that was the goal because I don't see that horror is listed as a subgenre anywhere for this book. Um, but it did have a creepy element to it. I did connect with Wendy on the grief and loss aspect of it. Um, however, Peter, I found slightly irritable just because he was childish despite, <laughs> yeah, I get that that's his character. What I did like about Aiden Thomas's um, retelling is this aspect that um, Peter Pan is a sort of shepherd of sorts, uh, where he ferries um, lost children and helps guide them. Um, this is, yeah, so it, it's, it's too, that was fairly interesting. So yeah, I gave this 3.5 stars. Um, it was decent. I uh, can't say that I would pick up another, um, Peter Pan retelling really, unless someone like was able to convince me otherwise. <laughs> but like, the cover of this is gorgeous. Um, I do still hope to read Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thompson. Tom Thomas. Aiden Thomas. I don't know why I keep thinking Thompson. So, yeah. So, this is my tarot readathon vlog. Um, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you have yet already to do so, hit the like button or hit the subscribe button and the little by bell icon to get notified when I post more content. Um, <laughs> yeah, I only did three books total for this readathon. 
Um, so about a book and a half a week, which is pretty on point for me. Um, that's huge. That's my reading pace. <laughs> and I'm pretty happy with it. So yeah, it was pretty fun to do this. I'm actually like really kind of bummed it's done because I had like more plans to film today for a vlog and I'm like, I really don't need to because the Tarot Readathon's done. So I may come up with more vlog, um, uh, ideas so keep an eye out for that um and yeah i hope that if you participated in the tarot readathon vlog let me know how you did down in the description or in the comments down below be sure to check out my raise awareness links and down in the description down below and i hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading i will see you again in another video very soon Cheers.